Mercedes-Benz is the only premium car manufacturer to offer light commercial vehicles, which can also be adapted to carry people. Ever seen the inside of one of those panel vans? Well, this is completely different. Successor to the Viano, the V-Class debuts in Edition 1 trim, which includes, among others, a Burmeister audio surround system, command online, adaptive cruise control, parking assistant, parking heater, three-zone climate control, road sign recognition system. The list is long and includes over 130 items. First on the market is the mid-length V-Class. The V-Class is around 14 cm longer than the respective Viano. If you've never driven a van before, you're probably worried that this car is difficult to maneuver around town. Well, it's not. Uh, it's got a really good turning circle. Um, what's more, uh, it's got a great 360 degrees view camera. It's got a bird's eye view, probably the best bird's eye view I've seen in uh, cars so far. So it's really a piece of cake to maneuver this car around town. Um, I suppose uh, it's going to be a great car to drive your boss around, but uh, I could imagine this car also as your family car. It depends on the sitting arrangement in the back. Yesterday I drove about uh, 1500 kilometers in this car. Um, I was a passenger and I was a driver and I have to say I am impressed with how comfortable this car is. Um, this car has many safety systems which make it easier to drive uh, along the motorway. It's got active cruise control, it's got uh, lane departure warning, so if I cross the lane like this, there is a slight vibration on the steering wheel. So even though I was tired after uh, about 10 hours or 15 hours uh, on the road, um, I knew where the car was going and uh, I felt relatively safe, especially that uh, whenever I got tired, whenever the car sensed I was tired, it would uh, give me a warning, tell me it's uh, time for a coffee break. So that's very convenient and that's something uh, you will enjoy as the driver. And this is something your passengers will also enjoy because uh, they know they're safe. That's if you follow the uh, car's instructions. One of the things I noticed here is that it's got the new C-Class dashboard. Uh, the new C-Class dashboard, I didn't like it in the C-Class. I thought it was too, too serious for the C-Class. But this is an executive car. It's uh, like, I don't know, like an executive coach. So this dashboard here, it does look absolutely great. It looks stunning. I also got used to Mercedes command line, command system, command, whatever this thing is called. Uh, after, you know, 10, 15 hours in the car, you get used to it. Uh, I do like BMW's solution more, BMW's iDrive, but that's because I probably drive BMW's more often than uh, Mercedes or Audi's. Speaking of the C-Class dashboard, passenger Mercs have the filler cap on the right, like the arrow on the fuel gauge indicates. However, in commercial vehicles, the filler cap is on the driver's side in the B pillar and this is the case here. By the way, I also found the QR code for the car's rescue sheet. It's a nice feature but just to be on the safe side, don't bet your local rescue service will have a smartphone to read it. It's better to download one for your car from rescuesheet.info. This car has a 2.1 liter diesel, 190 horsepower, uh, which is good because uh, weaker down-tuned version of this engine uh, was in the GLA I told you about uh, a few weeks ago and the GLA was definitely underpowered even with the 160 horsepower engine and it was a much smaller car. This car can come with a 160 horsepower 2.1 diesel, but this would be a car only to drive around town. If you're planning to take this car somewhere out on the road, on the motorway, you do want the 190 horsepower engine. The gearbox, it's good enough for this sort of a car. I don't expect this to uh, be a sporty drive. Um, if you want something sporty, no, you don't want a sporty fan. I mean, come on. Uh, 
you want this to be comfortable and you want your passengers in the back to be comfortable. Is there anything I don't like about the V-Class? Yes, there are a couple of things I don't like about it. Uh, yesterday I also saw I reminded myself of uh, what the uh, Viano interior looks like. Now, the dashboard is completely outdated in the Viano, uh, but what it does have is a little place next to the gearbox to put your coins and whatnot, which comes in handy when you're on the motorway and you don't have some sort of automated uh, toll system. Yesterday, I drove a lot on the motorway and uh, when I had to stop at the toll booth, I had to look for my money down here, all the way down there. Uh, this is a place where your phone is, you can lock it, uh, well, lock it, cover it really. Uh, there are two USB ports and a 12 volt socket, but it's too low. It's also where your two cup holders are. And this place is okay. There is another cup holder here in the door bins, and this is way too low because, uh, well, first of all, you have to see, you have to do this to actually reach it. And secondly, at night, you can't see it and you don't know whether the bottle is uh, in the um, in the cup holder or whether it just fell to the floor. So that I don't like. So uh, what is it like in the back? In the back, as you probably expected, there is plenty of place for four people to sit comfortably to uh, talk to discuss important business however if it was up to me uh, I would have no more than one person here and then I could just sort of ah, stretch my legs ah, and feel like a boss on vacation anyway uh, if I'm here with more people I can open this table and tables are cool because you can do some work right ah, see how it lifts so I can open it like that and uh, perhaps I could do some work. Can I do some work? Uh, well, no, not really, not on a 13-inch laptop because it's gonna slip all the time. Uh, of course, this thing has some sort of rubber legs here, so, um, so uh, it shouldn't fly too much, but it's difficult to work in this position and I can't sit here. Uh, so uh, if you want to work here, you need to have a smaller laptop or a tablet. What you can do instead is play your travel edition Scrabble. Two more issues in the back here. First of all, uh, in the back, the whole car wobbles, jumps. It's not as comfortable as uh, in the front. Second thing is that uh, communication with the driver is a bit of an issue, especially if you sit on these two seats here. Uh, basically, the driver can't hear you unless you shout to him. Shouting is not something you want to do, but uh, you can specify this car with an optional intercom so uh, the driver can hear you and I think it's something worth uh, considering if you're gonna drive this car with your family and friends. If you're gonna have your business meetings here in the back, then yeah, you don't really need an intercom because you can just tell the driver, Oi! Oi! Take me to my next meeting! And that's it, you don't want the driver listening in on your conversations. And now for the big question, how much is it? Prices of the V-Class start at around 43,000 euros, subtract the VAT and you end up with 36 grand. This V250 Bluetech Edition 1 costs 56,000 euros, plus VAT. So if you'd like one as a private buyer, be prepared to shell out around 67 grand. Also watch my other reviews and subscribe to my channel. New reviews every Friday. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Google+. You'll find all the links in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.